stoplaatjes nog voor de raad. Om hun grenzen te verlengen. En hen samen te spelen voor een compleet nieuw discipline. FEI Dressage World Cup returns for a new season. As the world's best athletes and horses take center stage to deliver performances full of grace, power, music, and artistry in a bid to secure a place at the finals in April 2024. This is equestrian sport at its most elegant. A very good morning and a warm welcome to the Neckerhal here in Mechelen, Belgium. Bringing together three of the World Cup qualifiers here this week. A wonderful way to celebrate Christmas and to sign off the 2023 season. This is leg six of the Western European League here in Mechelen, the FEI Dressage World Cup. And today, this morning, we see the Grand Prix building nicely towards the Grand Prix Freestyle that we will see here tomorrow afternoon. And we take a look at uh, how the Western European League stands after five legs of action. Sweden's Patrick Kittle, well out in front. He was a winner in Herning back in October Prior to that, he was a winner in Budapest as well, placings in Lyon and Stuttgart legs two and three, respectively. Morgan Barbasson, she's currently second and she features in the field here in Mechelen today. Other riders of note, fresh from a second place finish in London just a week or so ago, Lottie Fry, she features here this morning as well. We can see there, we're going to start with India, Anish Agawala and Sir Caramello. That's been a wonderful horse for him, a horse that's taken him to World Championships and Asian Games as well. Then as we get later on into the draw, Morgan Barbans on there with Habana Libre A, currently second in the Western European League standings at the moment. And then Larissa Paul Lewis for uh, Belgium, for the home side, she performed so, so well on uh, Spanish soil just a few weeks ago, placing in Madrid. She's uh, also picked up valuable points towards the season in Lyon and Stuttgart. Well, for a world-class competition, we need world-class judges. And the five that feature today, Luxembourg's Christoph Mbach at E. At H then, Belgium's Freddie Lehman. At C, Great Britain's Isabel Vessels. M, Edouard de Wolf van Vesterode for the Netherlands. And at B, another for Belgium, Jack van Dala. You can see there the judges in position 
ringside. And my word, it is a tough field that comes forward here this morning for the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix of Mechelen. 18 combinations due to start. The first half of the field, as we said, India's Anish Agawala, Morocco's Yassine Ramuni, Sweden Mads Hendeljevic, Benedikt Pakel for Hungary, Caroline Chu, the rider that's featured in several of the World Cup qualifiers already towards the 2023-2024 Western European League. Nadia Arbosloth, Lottie Fry, the world champion, with Everdale, Jorinda Verum and Mali van Balen for the Netherlands. They're the first nine that we're going to see in the first half of competition. It is building nicely, very nicely indeed. And as I said a moment ago, we've still got that FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix freestyle to come here tomorrow. Not only that, the FEI Driving World Cup qualifier here in Mechelen, and then Saturday afternoon, just before three o'clock here in Belgium, the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup of Mechelen as well. Those show jumping riders looking to gain points towards the Western Europe league as well and the western european league culminates in that world cup final that takes place in riyadh the dressage world cup final in riyadh in the kingdom of saudi arabia from the 16th to the 20th of april next year so there is so much at stake here in the fei dressage world cup grand prix of Mecca. so where do we start we start with india anish agawala and Sir Caramello Old, a 16-year-old girl it's by the great Sir Donahall, owned by Gutam Agawala. As I said a moment ago, it's been a tremendous horse for Anish, a horse that took him to the World Championships just last year. He was, in fact, the very first Indian rider to compete at a World Championship in dressage. They performed so well on that occasion. Last year they competed at the Asian Games and recent form has seen them placed in the top 10 in Roklo in Poland, scoring personal bests in both the Grand Prix and the Grand Prix Freestyle as well. Let's see how they fare. A huge amount of pressure on their shoulders here this morning. The first to go in the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix for India, Sir Caramello and Anish Agawala. Get an idea of the scores. Scores of around 69% in the early stages of the test. Half pass to the right, half pass to the left, and then into the collected trot. So the passage and then 
judges looking for 12 to 15 steps of Piaf. So we're coming now into the second half of the test. Looks to be some good scores coming through. Related to Canter. Some more strong scores coming through from the judges for the flying change at X. Should just start to see that running score increase ever so slightly. personal best for this man 67.804 and this is looking like a very strong test for our first to go Anish Agawala and Sir Caramello down the centre line they head the Piaf to the Passage the Halt Immobility and the salute to complete the first in the FEI dressage 
World Cup Grand Prix before our judges. Christoph Humbach, Freddie Lehman, Isabel Vessels, Edouard de Wolf van Westerrood, and Jack van Dahl. Just now, getting those scores confirmed from our five judges. Has he done enough to beat his personal best of 67.804? We will find out in just a moment's time. The scores are now confirmed. At E, 68.804. H looks to be 67.935. C, 68.370. M 67.5 and a B 68.696. Just going to get confirmation of that score, and there we have it 68.261 is the total score for Anish Agarwala. And he has put in an exceptional performance there to beat his previous personal best. New personal best here in the FBI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix of Mechelen to get us underway. Anish Agawala and Sir Aramello. And now we look to the next. Now this man has ridden for Morocco at Olympic Games, the London 2012 Olympics and the rearranged 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo. This is his Olympic ride from 2021, the 13 year old stallion by Ampere, all at once. He's also ridden at World Equestrian Games, competing in Normandy, Normandy back in 2014 with Floresco, that, a former horse of Patrick Kittles. Patrick Kittle, of course, the Swedish rider who sits top of the Western European League at the moment. So this is Yassine Ramouni for Morocco with his Olympic ride all at once. A very strong start. Just now starting to drop the scores. A little bit of difficulty with the halt and the five steps of rain back.
having a great deal of help from the horse all at once. Obviously feeling very fresh after the festive break. Delighted to be back in action here in the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix of Mechelen. Scores down to the mid 60s. One to the left, one to the right. Just looking to boost that score ever so slightly and doing just that there. Up to 65. into the Piaf, back to the Passage, down the centre line to Holt, and salute. Not an easy test for the man from Morocco with his Tokyo Olympic ride. All at once, completing there, Yassin Rahmouni. Just on occasions, not quite working with Yassine, did well there to finish the test in a strong position. And I think the scores on the way from Christophe Mbach, Freddie Lehman, Isabel Vessels, Edouard de Wolf, de Vesterode, and Jack Van Dahle. Judge Lee, 65 at H, 67.826. At C, 65.109. M, 66.522. And at B, 66.196, giving a total of 66.131. And that slots in to second place. The Yassine Rachmouni with uh, Anish Agawala still leading for India. But the next to go is a man that now rides for Sweden. Began his equestrian career at the age of four back in Denmark. Gained Swedish citizenship in 2008. He competed at the Rio Olympic Games in 2016 with his ride, Jimmy Chu. And joining us here with a 15-year-old mare by Donna Frederico. Out of a Don Rico mare, this is Donna Frederica.
score at the moment that leads, number 68.261. The grab queue, in fact. 13 year old for Mads Endeliovitz. Competing on the international stage for a long, long time now. Had a very successful career starting in Denmark before moving on to ride for Sweden at Olympic level. delighted with the start that they've made to the FBI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix here this morning. And providing they can keep this up for the rest of the test could well be a combination best result for Mads and Deliavitz of Sweden and autograph Q really lost a little bit of rhythm and impulsion there out of the Piaf Such a promising start to the test here this morning, but transitions from the passage to the Piaf and then back to the passage, just causing a few issues here for Mads Hendeliovitz and Autograph Q.
again, just using a little bit of the impulsion there in that canter pirouette to the right. Transition from the Passage to the Piaf and then back into the Passage before the halt and the salute to complete the test here. Sweden's Mats Hendeljevits and Autograph Q. Mats Hendeljovic and Fyodor Mats Hendeljovic. Applaus for the Mats Hendeljovic. Not from the half pass. At the start of the test, very convincing. But it was those transitions through the Passage and the Piaf that really caused the problems as the test went on. Mats Hendeljovic and the 13 year old autograph Q. So, scores now confirmed from our five judges at E, 62.283, at H, 62.826, at C, 64.239, M scores 62.391, and B, 64.239, exactly the same score as our judge at C, giving a total of 63.196, and that goes into a third there for Mad Hendeljevic and Autograph. But we continue on to one of the youngest riders featuring not only here in Mechelen but also the top level of the sport in the world of dressage. Just 24 years of age but already he's ridden at European Championships in recent form has seen him placed in the Grand Prix and the Grand Prix Freestyle in Rocklaw back in October and in Cronenberg just four weeks ago. On board the 15-year-old mare by Don Frederico, kind of a Don Rico sired mare. This is Peter Pankel's Donna Friederica and Hungary's Benedict Pankel. Anish Agarwal is still leading for India on 68.261, 66.131 second for Morocco's Yesin Mouni, and third, Sweden's Mad Hendeljevic on 63.196.
24 years of age, Benedict Patchell. It's a promising, strong start to the test. The score at the moment, 68.261. Updated scores in the bottom left-hand corner to be very promising indeed. 60s already. Changes there. It's the Grand Prix test, a set test. All the combinations that we see this morning will be following the same routine. But it is that Grand Prix freestyle that we'll see tomorrow. But things really become interesting and exciting. Just really get the opportunity to use their imagination to showcase the best of their horses' abilities. Time changes there across the opposite diagonal. 15 of those required this Grand Prix test. Mistake with those and these uh, counter pirouettes as well. The flying changes, the pirouettes, double coefficients in the Grand Prix test. Close to the leader, Anish Agawala and Sir Cameramello. There or thereabouts, Anish finished on 68.261. Benedict Hatchell. Hoping for a strong finish to the test, the passage, then into the Piaf. Just broke into the canter. He was hoping for the passage. Battle. Be costly for Benedict Patchell and Donna Friederica. They halt and they salute the judge at sea there. Receiving the salute, Isabel Vessels of Great Britain. Have they done enough? It was looking to be a very strong score, a little bit of a mishap, a little bit of a mistake down that centre line from the Piaf to the Passage. Could prove costly. 
de rechters bij Eekers op Ombak voor Luxemburg, bij Haas de right. Freddy Leijman voor België, Isabel Vesnets voor Groot-Brittannië, voor Benedict de Wolf, voor Hungary, just 24 years of age, already has ridden a European Championships, and a young man with a very bright future ahead of him. Well, scores now coming through from our five judges. E, 67.826. H, 67.717. C, 66.196. M, 66.957. And at B, 68.261. The final score for Benedict Hatchell and Donna Friederica is 67.391. And it goes in to second place. So, India. Yes, Anish Agarwal is still leading with Sir Caramello with their score 68.261. But we continue on to our next, and this lady is a familiar face on the FEI Dressage World Cup circuit. Caroline Chu for Singapore and Blue Horse Zachmo. New ride for her for 2023, this one 14-year-old stallion by Blue Horse Zach out of a mare by Donna Hall, the second. But many of you will have seen Caroline Chu with her horse, Tribbiani, a horse that took her to two world championships, a horse on which she finished 12th at the World Cup final earlier this year. But this one going strong for her already this season. Singapore's Caroline Chu and the 14-year-old blue horse, Zachmo.
across the bag. The lady from Singapore that has written 2018 and 2022 World Championships. get the one-time changes at the start. That's 69% at the moment, but could just cause a few issues there. Yeah, dropped it down quite dramatically there to 67. Extended trot across the diagonal, then. And passage, Piaf Passage to complete. Not too far off. 68.261, the leading score at the moment. She turns down that centre line. She's on 68.263, which would be enough, but she loses a little bit of impulsion there from the Passage to the Piaf. The halt and the salute to our judge at Sea Great Britain's Isabel Vessels. And it was so, so close. As she came down that centre line to complete, she'd be hoping for a strong, strong finish to the testers. Caroline Chu of Singapore looks to take charge of the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix here in Mechelen. We await the final scores, but it looks as if she might have just done enough to edge out in front. A few tiny mistakes that crept in towards the end of the test, but don't forget, this is a new ride for her for 2023, and they are only going to get stronger and stronger as their partnership develops. Well, the score's now through. E, 68.370. H, 68.478. C, 70. M, 68.587. B, 67.5. Total score, which goes into the lead for Singapore's Caroline Chu, 68.587, which means we've got a new leader, and that is Singapore's Caroline Chu and Blue Horse Sanchmo. Five gone means... Uh, Anush Agarwala drops down to second place as things stand. Benedict Patchell third, Yesin Rachmuni in fourth, and Mads Hendeljevic of Sweden in fifth. But we move on to our next. On the Denmark team that won the Nations Cup in Falsterbo earlier this year, fourth in the Grand Prix freestyle there, a personal best with this rider. 76.9. Her Grand Prix personal best was in Falsterbo last year, 71.413. This horse, just 10 years old, only in second season competing in the big tour competitions. The Gelding by Foundation is Favor Gerstorf and Denmark's Nadia Arbosluth.
looks as if there's some very strong scores coming through for the Piaf, where so many that have gone before her have faltered. Strong scores for the Piaf, for Nadia Arbo Sloth and Fever Gerstorf. See there with the running scores around playing out before us here in Mechelen. We see the likes of Caroline Chu and a new ride for her in Blue Horse Zachmo. Then we see this 10-year-old competing only in his second season in the Big Tour competitions. Keep it together down the centre line now. Nadia Arbosloth, Faber Gersdorf. At the moment, they're on a new leading score. Passage, Holt, Salute. Have they done enough? Ten year old, what a superstar. Leading score at the moment. 68.587, that's for Caroline Chu and Blue Horse Satchmo. But there's some good scores coming in from our five judges, and this could be the first to head over the 70% marker. Nadia Arbosloth, Favor Gerstorf, and we see that score begin to come through now, and they have certainly done enough to edge out in front. Judge E, 70.543. At H, 71.304. C, 71.304. M, 70.543. And a B, 71.413. She will be delighted with that. The 10-year-old Faber Gustav scores 71.021 and now leads the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix of Mechelen. But 
I am sure she will be watching this next test with great interest. The world number two. The young lady that won the world championship just last year on one of her two wonder rides. Glamourdale winning the freestyle with a score of 90.654. She rode this horse at the Olympic Games in Tokyo and the European Championships to a team silver medal there two years ago. Last year, she was top 10 in the World Cup final, finishing eighth on board Dark Legend. This horse, though, is her European Get championship partner, her Olympic partner as well. The 14-year-old stallion by Lord Leatherdale. This is Everdale and Great Britain's Lottie Fry. World number two, current reigning world champion. And already we can see in the early stages of the test that the world champion is beginning to flex her muscles. Scores in the mid to high 70s early in the test. Strong scores for the half pass. More strong scores for the Passage and the Piaf. Lottie Fry and Everdale. Still scoring around 
mid 70s. Power and ground coverage there. And the extension in the counter. One time changes now. Looking for some more scores from the judges to increase that score, the total score, even more. 71.021 leading at the moment for Denmark's. Nadia, Arbo Sloth and Faber Gerstorf, but that looks very much under threat here with Lottie Fry and Everdale. expression through that extended trot. Scored so highly early in the test in the Passage and the Piaf. Let's see if she can pick up some good scores again. 76.079 at the moment. She's got a little bit of breathing room now. With the final passage. And she gets a big round of applause. Plenty of fuss for Everdale as well. There's a smile on the face of Lottie Fry. And we've got some very strong scores coming through already from our judges. Judge E scores it 71.848. That's the lowest of the scores from the five judges. H, 77.717. C, 76.957. 7, M, 76.196. And B, 78.043. And as we look at those highlights, we can really see why the ground coverage and the expression in that extended counter, silky smooth in the half pass. New leader, Sopa, 76, 152. And Time changes there for the counter pirouettes towards the end of the test. The leading score was 71.021, but it's not anymore because with those scores from our five judges, the total for Lottie Fry and Everdale is 76.152. And she's not only gone into the lead, she's stormed into the lead there. The world champion, the world number two, leads the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix here. Lottie Fry and Everdale, 76.152, the new leading score. But what can this next lady do? With the support of the Neckerhal here in Mechelen, right behind her. The first for Belgium, Jorinda Verwim, and the 11-year-old gelding, Charmer. It's been a wonderful ride for Jorinda. Earlier this year, they were 13th in the World Cup final. Last season, they placed here in Mechelen, along with placings in Stuttgart, Madrid, and Basel. With her previous ride, Tiamo, she rode at two European Championships and the Rio Olympic Games as well. But here with Chama, Belgium's 
Yorinda Owen. Just a little bit of a resistance there. 
towards the end of the test. Not quite been the fairy tale that Yorinda Verwin would have hoped for with Charmer in front of the home crowd. Saw her here in Mechelen 12 months ago, and it's great for her to be back in front of the home crowd here in 2023. atmosphere here at the Necker Hall in Mechelen. And that atmosphere, just getting to a few of the horses here this morning in the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix. See that horse. A little bit tense. So, here are the scores. 62.609 at E. 65.326 at H. Judge at C scores 64.239. M 62.935. And at B 66.848. Giving a final score of 64.391. At the moment, that goes into seventh place as we take the opportunity to have a little look at the leaderboard. Lottie Fry out in front on 76.152. Denmark's Nadia Arbosloth in second, with Singapore's Caroline Chu and Blue Horse Sachmo in third. But there's one to go before we pause at the midway stage of the FAI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix. And that is the 11 year old gelding, Habibi DVB, by Blue Horse Don Schufero out of a Johnson TN mare. And now this horse only competed in its first FEI, its first international competition, 12 months ago. Since then, they've gone on to place in Le Mans, picking up second in the Grand Prix and the Grand Prix freestyle there back in February. The lady in the saddle though, now she's ridden at four World Cup finals and two Olympic games, Athens, way back in 2004 and Tokyo just two years ago. For the Netherlands here with Habibi DVB, Marlies van Balen.
real strong start to the test. Around 73% at the moment, Marlies van Balen. international debut just 12 months ago. So at the moment, Lottie Fry leading on that score of 76.152. Nadia Aboslov in second on 71.021. But this looks to be a very strong test indeed for Marlies van Balen of the Netherlands and her BB DVB. Scores just under 73% at the moment. Piaf Passage down the centre line. A little bit of a spook there in that extended trot. Hopefully, not too costly turning down the centre line. Still around 72 73%, which could be enough for second place. working to keep the energy in the Piaf. Definitely going to be into the top three. Is it enough for second place at the moment for Marlies van Balen and her BB DVB? She thinks it is because there's a huge round of applause from the crowd and the smile on her face was beaming you can tell that she is delighted with that performance there from the 11 year old habibi d v b international debut 12 months ago and here they are competing for points towards the western european league in the fei Dressage World Cup Grand Prix of Mechelen. 11 years of age. The gelding by Blue Horse Don Super Chufro. Now we await the scores. Marlies van Balen. She's over the moon with her performance, but she'll be biting her nails. Look what it meant to her. And here come the scores. E, 71.739. H, 73.152. C, 
73.478 M, 72.283 and B, 74.891. There's a high five on the way out of the Christmas arena because in to second goes Marlies Van Balen and Habibi DVB. They go into second place, Nadia Arbosloth in third, Caroline Chu fourth, Anish Agarwala for India in fifth, Benedict Patchell in sixth, then seventh, eighth and ninth, it's Yasina Rahmuni, Yorind Vavimp and Mads Hendeliovitz. But leading at the halfway stage with a tremendous score of 76.152. The world champion, the current world number two, Great Britain's Lottie Fry and Everdale. But as we look at those still to come in the second half of competition, we've got Charlotte de Falke, Domien Michel, Bianca Noag Ullenbrock, Flora de Vin, Damars Vistra, Morgan Barbanson, Raphael Netz, Corentin Potier, and Larissa Paulus. All left to go. And we're back in around eight minutes' time with the second half of the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix of Mechelen.
the FEI A League. Get into the judge seat and the FEI Dressage World Cup with the chance to win great prizes. You have the unique opportunity to judge the competing riders here in Mechelen and uh, an upcoming FA Dressage World Cup Western League events. Join the FEI E League today by downloading the Spectator Judging app and uh, select Jumping Mechelen. You can predict the top three riders to score extra points and uh, compare your marks directly with the judges. Great rewards await the most activity and uh, accurate players at the end of the season with a trip for the two of future FEI Dressage event. Even as uh, the grand prize. The judges' seat is yours. Download the Spectator Judging app now from the App Store or Google Play. Wees gezeten, dames en heren, want uh, zo dadelijk gaan we van start. En u ziet dan nog meteen het uh, blok uh, gaat zich in uh, Charlotte Fry, Great Britain, uh, steeds on the lead with 76-152. Rot door uh, Marlies uh, van Palen met HBB, DBB met uh, 7309. En op een gelopen derde plaats voor Denemarken met uh, Favour Gastoff, uh, Nadja Abu Straf. Dat is de well, we are halfway through the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix. Still to come, Charlotte de Falke, Domien Michels of Belgium, Germany's Bianca Noag Ullenbrock, Belgium again, Florida de Vin and Flynn, FRH. Then the world number 16, Thamaz Vistra. The world number 14, Morgan Barbasson. Germany's Raphael Netz features them, currently fourth on the Western European League. Corentin Potier for France. And the last to go, Larissa Paulus and Flambeau. Lottie Fry, though, very much in control in the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix of Mechelen. She leads at the halfway stage with a score of 76.152. The reigning world champion strutting her stuff here in Belgium and putting the pressure on those that feature in the second half of the draw. And we resume the action with a combination that together made their first major championship appearance 10 years ago at the Junior European Championships. They have gone on from strength to strength, winning in Doha, placing in Hagen, Aachen and Amsterdam. But Mechelen holds a special place in their heart because it was here where they competed in their very first World Cup qualifier. She's still just 28 years of age, riding in front of her home crowd here this morning. Charlotte de Falque and the 17-year-old stallion by Vivaldi, Botticelli.
top three at the moment, all above 70%. Nadia Arbosloff, 71.021. Marlies Van Balen, 73.109. And Monty Fry, 76.152. Still scores of over 70% at the moment. Sits up there for the passage. For a top three placing at the moment. On a ship that have been together for over 10 years now, competing here on home soil. And there is the salute 28 year old Charlotte de Falque and the now 17 year old stallion Botticelli. First major championship, the Junior Europeans back in 2013, the horse then just seven years of age. Their first World Cup qualifier was here in Mechelen. They've come back home here this morning to compete in the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix. Fingers now crossed. For Charlotte de Falque. And the Pinto Dams Lady are on the Zonk with an aankomen for Charlotte de Falque. 71 punten bij 100 en brengt daar meteen op de lok de derde plaats. And there we see the scores, 70.217, 72.065, 71.087, 71.196 and 72.935. That, I believe, is a personal best for that combination, 71.5 the total. And they go into third place there, Charlotte de Falque and Botticelli in to third place. Marlies Van Balen second, Lottie Fry still leading here this morning.
but on we go to the next. We stay with the host nation of Belgium. And a combination that we've seen placed here in Mechelen before now. They've placed in Sertogenbosch, in Doha, and they've ridden at World and European Championships and the Olympic Games just two years ago. They scored a personal best in the Grand Prix there, 70.202. It's Domia Michels and Intermezzo Van Het Merdalahoff.
So one final time. Domia Michel heads down the center line. Passage, Piaf, and the Passage. Scores over 70 at the moment. Don't think it's going to quite be enough to break into the top three, but it's another good score for the home nation riders here in Mechelen. Another good score for Belgium. Looks to be over 70%, which I'm sure at the moment will head into the uh, top five. And it is a truly wonderful experience for these riders competing in front of their home crowd really does bring out the best of them. This, of course, like six of the Western European League, but as we head into the new year, we've got the likes of Basel, Amsterdam, Neumünster, Gothenburg, and Sertogenbosch that make up the 11 legs of the Western European League, all building towards the final in Riyadh from the 16th to the 20th of April. Scores through 70, 70 70.435, 71.413, 70.217 and 69.783, giving a total score of 70.370 and it goes in two fifths to Lottie Fry leading. Marlies Van Baal in second, Charlotte de Falke in third. But the next to go is a rider that has scored gold medals all the way up the youth rankings, from Pony Europeans into juniors, young riders, and then on to under 25s as well. A team gold and individual silver back in 2019. She's then placed at World Young Horse Championships with horses that uh, she has produced herself. And then, this season, placed in the World Cup qualifiers in both Lyon and in Stuttgart as well. For Germany here, riding the 11-year-old Gali by Quarter Hall, it's uh, Kjolito and Bianca Noag, Ullenbrock.
at the moment around 69%. Hoping just to boost that ever so slightly. around six was Lottie Fry leading comfortably Marley's van Barlin in second but then third to six very close indeed on the scoreboard But it's been a very strong finish to the test. And we can see that as the score begins to creep up around 70.1 now. It will be very interesting to see how they finish. Bianca Noag, Ullenbrock and Kyolito. Have they done enough to break into the top five? Will they have to settle for sixth place? We've got a few more scores coming through but a very very strong finish to the test there as the horse began to relax and settle and that will set them up nicely with of course the Grand Prix freestyle to come here tomorrow that's the one that they all want to win as they look for those valuable points towards the Western European League which Patrick Kittle leads Morgan Barbanson she features in a moment's time she's currently in second but that could all change. A win here would put an extra 20 points onto the scoreboard. And if Morgan Barbanson was to win, she would then go to the top of the Western European League. But that a long way from now. 70.108 the total. 68.913 at E. 70.543 at H. 70.217 at C. 70.326 at M and 70.543 at B. 70.108 goes into sixth place. But back now to the Belgian riders. Two for Belgium remain in the draw in this one of them. And it's the youngest horse that features in the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix. Nine years of age, the stallion by Tannenhoff's Fahrenheit. This is Flynn, F-R-H. Only started competing at Grand Prix level 12 months ago and has been produced by the lady in the saddle all the way through the young horse classes. They competed earlier this year at the European Championships, an incredible achievement for a nine-year-old horse. And now in front of their home crowd here in Mechelen. For Belgium, Flynn, F-R-H, and Flor de Vin. Already there we can see the power and expression in the extended trot. But that is why this lady 
thought earlier this year that at just nine years of age this horse was ready for a European Championship. So much talent, so much ability, and such a bright future ahead. Just losing a little bit of ground on the leader. Lottie Fry through the extended and then collected walk. Made a very strong start to the test. Dipped off ever so slightly in the middle, but now with a strong finish as well and the score just increasing. 70.47, edging up to around 
five still creeping up through the Passage and the Piaf. Just a nine-year-old, remember that name. It's a name that we will be hearing much more of in the future. Flynn, F-R-H, and Flora de Vinda. So strong at the start of the test, the early stages. Nine-year-old with so much talent and so much potential, and what an achievement for Flora de Vinda. Produce the horse all the way through the ranks to Grand Prix level. Started competing in the Grand Prix as an eight-year-old last season. And the score today, 69.891, 70.217, 70.435, 72.065, and 71.848, giving a total of 70.891, and it goes in to fifth place there, into fifth for Flor Devin and the nine-year-old Flynn, F-R-H. But it is still Lottie Fry leading. Marley Van Balen in second. Charlotte de Falke third. Nadia Albo Sloth in fourth. And there's five still to go. But of those five, two in the world's top 20, all in the world's top 50. The Netherlands now, the Mars Vistra, and the 10-year-old stallion, Hexagons Itchweiss. The Mar rode at the World Championships and the World Cup Final last year. She was 11th in that World Cup Final. Last season, on the Western European League, she picked up top 10 placings in Lyon, Madrid, Basel, and here in Mechelen. She was second in the Grand Prix in Madrid. The world number 16 for the Netherlands, for the 10-year-old Hexagons Ikvice, the Mars Vistra.
consistent performance so far for the world's number 16, Thamar Svistra and Hexagon's Ick Weiss. Consistently around 71, 72% through those two time changes across the diagonal. Right, you would have hoped through, through the one-time changes. Another of the younger horses featuring here. This one, 10 years of age. These dressage horses really only coming into their prime around 9 or 10. Some of these horses it will be their first season competing on the World Cup Series. Get used to competing in the open outdoor arenas in the summertime and then the World Cup Series is something completely different. Indoor, confined space, the crowd right on top of the arena and the atmosphere electric from start to finish. But from start to finish, she's been around 71%. Could be enough for a top three finish, possibly. We wait and we see. World number 16 for the Netherlands, the Mars Vistra and the 10-year-old Hexagon's Ick Weiss. 10-year-old Ten. stallion by hexagons, Ruby Quill, out of a Negro mare. Huge amount of power and energy. Quite often the case that it takes those horses a little bit longer just to learn how to make sure that that power and energy is used at the correct time. And when to keep a lid on it, See the power there in the extension across the diagonal. Well, here come the scores. Fourth, the Mars Vistra. E, 70.326. H, 72.609. C, 69.891. M, 72.5. And B, 73.478. Total, 71.761. And it goes into third there, fourth, Thamaz Vistra and the 10-year-old Hexagon's Ick Vice. And you could see there the spook when we received the scores, having a very good look at the crowd. Thamaz Vistra just taking the opportunity there to give the 10-year-old a good look around, hopefully to set him up nicely for tomorrow's FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix freestyle. But now for the final four. And this is the world number 14. She sits second in the Western European League, having placed already this season on home soil in Lyon, Madrid, and in London just over a week ago as well. 
her eyes firmly set on the Olympic Games in Paris next summertime. It is with the 11-year-old galley, Habana Libre A, Francis Morgan Barbasson. World number 14, Morgan Barbanson. Originally rode for Spain up until 2018 when she switched to France. Has gone from strength to strength ever since. So far, She's around the 72, 73%. Little bit of a hesitation there on the two time changes. Just drops the score down to 71.737 at the moment. She'll be hoping that'll creep back up because it is so close at the top end of the leaderboard. The smallest of margins separating third down to around seventh or eighth at the moment.
just edging back up towards 72. Could see her into a podium placing here, Morgan Barbasson. Second at the moment in the Western European League and looking for more points here in Mechelen. that she rode at the European Championships earlier this year. 72 now. Down that final centre line. What will Morgan Barbanson score? We wait to see. Has she done enough for a top three finish here? this afternoon in Mechelen with three left to go we await the scores from our judges here Christoph Umbach, Freddie Lehmann, Isabel Vessels, Eduard de Wolf van Westerode and Jack van Dahl Those canter pirouettes to the left, then to the right, towards the end of the test. The FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix here this afternoon. And there we see the scores 71.630, 71.522, 72.174, and 72.065, which means Morgan Barbasson and Havana Libre A go into third place at the moment with three left to go. One for France, one for Belgium, and the next for Germany. Currently the world number 26, but very much working his way up through those rankings. He's had a tremendous season on the Western European League so far. Currently sitting in fourth place on 39 points. Second earlier in the season in Vesnaba. He's gone on then to place in Herning and in Stuttgart as well. Looks as if he's heading to that World Cup final in Riyadh from the 16th to the 20th of April. The world number 26 riding the 12 year old girl in by Johnson Tien. Great escape Camelot is Germany's Raphael Metz.
this at the moment could really spoil the party for Lottie Fry. You can see in the bottom left-hand corner the running score, 75.778. That was the best that we'd seen up until that point, just dropping off ever so slightly, though, through that extended walk. Lost a little bit of rhythm out of the Piaf, but plenty of elevation. that began their journey together earlier this year. Personal best together up until this point, 72.652. Two. Can they score a new personal best here today in Mechelen? At the moment, it's very, very close, but it's looking good and it's looking hopeful. All throughout the test, he scored well in the Passage and the Piaf. Potentially a new personal best. But at the moment, almost certainly looks like a top three placing for now. Raphael Nets and the 12 year old great escape Camelot. It is going to be so, so close. The work down the final line through the Passage and the Piaf was very very strong indeed and it looks to have really boosted the score
Let's have a look. Judge at E, 71.739. At H, 75.326. At C, 72.609. M, 74.130. B, 71.957. The total, it is a new personal best, 73. Point one five two. Not only a new personal best, but it goes into second for Rafael Metz and Great Escape Camelot. Lottie Fry, though, still leading. What a tremendous score. What a tremendous target she set early in the draw. 76.152. She leads by 3% here in the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix. But this is our penultimate combination. It's a partnership that have been together since the horse was seven years of age, now a 12-year-old. They rode at the World Championships together last summertime. Recent form, seen them on the Victorious Nations Cup team for France in Rotterdam. Second in the Grand Prix freestyle there and a top 10 finish in Basel at the start of the year. It is for France, Corentin Portier and the 12-year-old gelding by Totalas, Gotelas de Fiard.
so running score at around the halfway stage looking to be around 71 percent 71.087 would be good enough for seventh place and to think 72.065 currently in fourth for Colin Tampotier, 72.522. So that more than in reach here this afternoon. Still around 71, 71.5-ish. Sixth for seventh as things stand. As he drops back to the trot here, can he go all out at the end of the test? score as we've seen with so many edging up down that final line as the riders just begin to push that little bit more to finish with a bang here in the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix Should definitely be enough for a top 10 finish in the Grand Prix here in Mechelen. Corentin Portier of France with a 12 year old Gotelas de Fouillard. Score still rising ever so slightly. Smooth changes. The two time and the one time changes. Very good indeed. From Corentin Potier. Go to last if we are. And now we see those scores. 70.870 at E, 70.978 at H, 73.587 at C, 71.196 at M and at B, 71.848. The total, 71.696. And it goes into sixth place there for Francis Corentin Potier and Gautilas de Fouillard with just one left to go. Lottie Fry still leading with her score of 76.152. Raphael Netz in second, Marlies van Balen in third, but this is not yet over. There's one still to go. The lady that currently sits 11th in the Western European League. She placed in Lyon, Stuttgart and finished in the top 10 in Madrid earlier this month. She rode 
at European Championships earlier this year and in 2021. Last year's World Championships and the Tokyo Olympic Games as well. This was her Olympic ride two years ago. For the world number 24, the 13-year-old girl in Bayon pair, Flambeau, Belgium's Larissa Paul-Lewis.
Scores on around 71, 72, fluctuating between the two. For the Belgian, in front of the home crowd, the last to go in the FEI Dressage World Cup. Grand Prix today, Grand Prix freestyle tomorrow here in Mechelen. That, of course, not to be missed. Freestyle gets underway tomorrow morning here at 10.45. But it is such fine margins at the top of the leaderboard. A moment ago, her score would have seen her into around eighth and ninth. Now it's edging up, and she's moving up the rankings around fifth place at the moment if she can hold it together through this final passage to the halt. That score still increasing. And there's the halt, and it looks a good one as well. So now we wait and see. She performed so well in Madrid just a few weeks ago. What is the score for Larissa Paluis and Flambeau? We will find out any moment now. We enjoy those highlights there of Larissa in front of the home crowd here in Belgium. That final canter pirouette. And here we see the scores then. Larissa Paulus and Flambeau. E, 70.543. H, 73.587. C, 71.848. At M, 73.913. And at B, 72.609. The total is 72 point five and it's a fourth place finish there for Larissa Paul Lewis and Flambeau but what sport what competition we have seen but it is a very decisive victory for Great Britain's Lottie Fry and Everdale and she will return tomorrow morning for the Grand Prix freestyle full of confidence as she wins the Grand Prix here with Everdale second it's Germany's Raphael Netz and the new ride for him, Great Escape Camelot. In third, the Netherlands, Marlies van Balen and her BB DVB. Fourth, and the best of the Belgians, Larissa Paul Lewis and Flambeau. And fifth was France's Morgan Barbasson, Habana Libre A. The Netherlands then feature in sixth place uh, the Mars Vistra and Hexagons Ick Weiss. And in seventh, Francis Corentin Potier and Gautelas de Fuyard. Well, it's building towards that presentation of awards. Here for the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix. And of course, another reminder, 10.45 tomorrow morning here in Belgium, the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix Freestyle. Still, of course, to come today, what action lies ahead? Five-star jumping, the Agora, one round against the clock. That following on from this FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix. And then the FEI Jumping Ponies Trophy. The second leg here in Mechelen today. We saw the first leg yesterday. Young Rider action, the Young Rider Grand Prix for Jumping Mechelen here at 5.30. And then 8 o'clock this evening, the KBC Bank and Visa Cutting five-star competition. Now that, a jump off against the clock for the big five-star competition here in Mechelen. As we look ahead to tomorrow, the first competition for the FEI Driving World Cup Qualifier of Mechelen and of course the second competition for this FEI Dressage World Cup, the Grand Prix Freestyle. And then Saturday, it sees the final of the Driving World Cup Qualifier 
and the Longin FEI Jumping World Cup qualifier of Mechelen as well. Brilliant. Tremendous to have the three World Cup qualifiers here in Belgium for 2023. Of course, the World Cup final for dressage, that taking place in Riyadh, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, on the 16th to the 20th of April. Riyadh also hosting the jumping World Cup final for 2023 as well. Well, some of the younger, less experienced dressage horses getting the opportunity to work in the Christmas arena just for a moment or two. Younger horses with a huge amount of talent and potential. You can see there just maybe not quite as used to the atmosphere as those horses that we saw just a moment ago in the World Cup qualifier here in Mechelen. But these young horses could well be featuring in the World Cup qualifiers and at major championships in the very near future. So some brilliant action here already on FEI TV for the Dressage World Cup Grand Prix. More with FEI TV tomorrow. The Grand Prix freestyle and the driving. Then Saturday, we see the final of the driving and the Jumping World Cup qualifier as well. But don't forget, this, of course, the sixth leg of the Western European League here in Belgium. From here, in the new year, we head to Switzerland, to Basel, then Amsterdam, New Munster, Gothenburg, and the series completes in the Netherlands, the Dutch Masters in Sertogenbosch at the start of March. That will be the final opportunity for these riders to book a ticket through to the Dressage World Cup final in Riyadh.
Wales, de laatste twee combinaties, dames en heren, in is met het nummer 7. Pieter Poets rijdt Romina van het Colliesbos. Een afstamming van de glamodel Malcamus. Gevoegd bij Stefan Poets. Eigen boekproduct van de familie Poets. Finalist op het WK met 80% in de selectieproeven. VWT aanlegtesten en CDN gelopen met meer dan 80%. En uiteraard ook opgenomen in het WK-team 2023. En last but not least, met de nummer 8 is het uitkijken naar Amper Heikbergel. Die is de Roger en die gaat van zaak met Rianta van de Kempenhoeven. Een afstamming van Indian Rock en Quarterback. Trok bij BWP de Kempenhoeven. Belgisch kampioen in 2021. Finalist Selectie WK 2021, top 5 op het WK 2022 en finalist Selectie WK 2023. Geef al deze paarden en ruiten stop maar zijn daarvan de applausje mee, de dames en heren. Het mag wel. PWP Talent Scouting Team, hier de reçue voorstelling voor jullie. De talenten van morgen. We laten u nog rustig even genieten van de Cotiles du Feuillard. Deze jong en veelbelovende talenten alvast in de ring. Romina van het Kwalisbos en Rianta van de Kempenhoeve. Finalisten, laureaten en de toekomst voor morgen alvast deze prestatie zullen de dressuur pakken. Ze gaan ons verlaten, dames en heren, met een warm applaus van u allen. En hartelijk dank u alvast aan de PTP Talent Scouting Team. Hartelijk dank voor jullie optreden.
Dames en heren, we zijn er klaar voor de prijsuitreiking op de achtste plaats. Geef alvast een verwelkomen applaus voor... Well, the stage now very much set for the prize giving here of the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix. And joining us there for the home nation of Belgium, Charlotte de Falque and Botticelli, finishing in eighth place with a personal best of 71.5. And she's followed by seventh place for France, Corentin Portier and Gautelas de Fouillard. It's then sixth place for Thomas Vistra of the Netherlands and Hexagon's Ick Weiss. Ten-year-old finishing in sixth on a score of 71.761. Francis Morgan Barbasson finishing in fifth place, the world number 14, fifth with Havana Libre A. And there in fourth, the best of the Belgium riders, Larissa Paul Lewis and Flambeau. Well, we've seen 8th, 7th, 6th, 5th, and 4th. And now we get to see the top three in the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix of Mechelen. And all very much in contention of taking the victory in tomorrow morning's Grand Prix Freestyle. And leading in the top three, the lady that was second in London just over a week ago, she's gone one better to win here in Mechelen. Great Britain's Lottie Fry and Everdale. There in second, Germany's Raphael Netz and Great Escape Camelot. And third there, Marlies van Balen and her ride, Habibi DVB. Opportunity for the national anthem of our winner, Lottie Fry of Great Britain.
The world champion is a champion here in Mechelen this afternoon. World number two, but number one in the World Cup Grand Prix. Opportunity now for all of those to congratulate our top three. Members of the organizing committee, representatives of the FEI as well. Stepping forward to congratulate the one, two, three of Lottie Fry and Everdale, Raphael Nets and Great Escape Camelot, and Marlies Van Balen and Habibi DVB. A proud moment for our top three. And now they begin to turn their attention towards tomorrow's big one. The FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix three star. With the winner receiving 20 points towards the Western European League as they look to qualify for the Dressage World Cup final in Riyadh in April of next year. And it looks as if we've got a little prize for our winner as well. An electric bike going to Lottie Fry, the winner for Great Britain with Everdale. Member of the sponsoring party. Tremendous sponsors here. BMW, of course, sponsoring the Masters here in Mechelen yesterday evening. Proud moment for the winner of the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix of Mechelen. The winner is Great Britain, Everdale and Lottie Fry. Well, there she goes, the winner, Great Britain's Lottie Fry and Everdale. We'll see her tomorrow in the FEI Dressage World Cup Grand Prix freestyle. But the action here in Mechelen on day three is only just beginning because we've got show jumping action at the very highest quality still to come. Starting shortly, the five-star Agora Trophy. Then the FEI Jumping Ponies Trophy, the second leg here in Mechelen, that a little later this afternoon. And then the big one, the KBC Bank and Visa Curling five-star trophy this evening. That's starting at 8 o'clock. But it is that Agora Trophy five-star show jumping starting shortly here in the Christmas Arena in Mechelen.
Cup returns for a new season. As the world's best athletes and horses take center stage to deliver performances full of grace, power, music, and artistry in a bid to secure a place at the finals in April 2024. This is equestrian sport at its most elegant.